Imagine a classic Spitfire, but with a screaming Hayabusa engine in it. It's not a concept car. It's real. And Mike, from BC's Lake District, is living that dream. Mike isn't doing a restoration of a Spitfire. What he's got planned is absolute voodoo. The bike engine is designed to drive a chain and not a prop shaft. So he's got to do that conversion. You see, the bike engine, um, the output shaft lies off to the side, kind of over on the passenger side of the car here in North America. So it's not a, just a bolt-on. Uh, there's engineering changes um, from the output shaft of uh, the transmission to the prop shaft uh, to the differential. Everything needs to be aligned and fit. Uh, get it right, and it everything goes vroom, vroom. Get it wrong, and it just goes inkle tinkle -ty plink But here's the twist. Sometimes a build doesn't turn out exactly as planned. Parts were removed, and the project took a bit of a turn. That's where the story begins. Why take a classic Roadster and drop in a crazy Hayabusa engine? And what does it feel like when the original plan takes a little bit of a turn and goes sideways? So here comes the question, why? Why? Why, why a know, Spitfire and why a Hayabusa? Well, I've always wanted to put a motorcycle engine to a small car, yeah. just because of the power to weight ratio. Yeah, of course. I've, I've always been into cars I mean, since I was a kid. So, uh, but it's always been one of those uh, ideas I had that uh, you know it's, you're throwing money at something that's not going to be practical. You're pretty sure. Yeah. And so I had some time. I just retired recently, and I had some time, and I thought, and uh, my original plan was to put it into an MG Midget. Uh, but one of the yeah. interesting things that they did have is uh, in talking to them, um, uh, David Seville Peck over on uh, Lake Cowich in a way. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, he's, he pointed out the, the reverser that they use um, takes the, um, the output shaft, which is well in the passenger side of where, you know, yep. we'd want to have the, um, the, the drive shaft located. And it right. uses a chain uh, right. to relocate it so that the output is down the center of the car. And, okay. you know, that's that's an easy solution uh, for, for your problem, although it's messy because it throws lots of um, uh, gear grease all over. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. And, yeah, and there's, you know, there's a fair bit of engineering, though, too, to, to make a chain drive crossover in that. And I yeah. thought about doing that. Uh, my original plan was just to cut away some of the body and just go with a long drive shaft. Yeah. And then I started looking into drive shafts, which I didn't know as much about as I thought I did and yeah. there's a critical length and critical speeds and yeah. uh, so I ended up building a two-piece drive shaft yeah I, I used the standard drive shaft back uh some of the uh, spits had uh cv joint at one end yeah and cvs can withstand a fair bit of angle compared to a u joint yeah and so the cv uh, joint on the uh original drive shaft is used Mm -hmm. at one of the angles and then i have a steady bearing from a bmw yep. 3 series and then a wow. cv so a custom drive shaft which is short which goes to the adapter on the uh, is it rock. splined um no but it doesn't okay. really it doesn't really need to be because it's a fixed rear diff right it's a okay yeah yeah i've got two piece on mine and it is blind well with the cvs you don't really need the spline so much because it's uh there there's play in the cv right okay yeah. Right. It allows some movement for and aft as well. Yeah. As the angle change. Mm -hmm. So that seemed to work actually pretty good. Uh, I have access to a machine shop. I work in aviation, so uh, I still talk to the machinists and everything. Yeah. I'm down at uh, Flightcraft, where I retired from. So, oh, so that was kind of a bonus. Yeah. So anyway, the the MG midget idea, I scrapped it, and I thought, well, the Spitz got a bigger, bigger engine compartment. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't weigh really much more in a midget, uh, and you can reduce a lot of weight by pulling the bumpers and all that stuff off. And uh, that part worked out all right. The Hayabusa engine, it's mad, but it makes sense. Lightweight, high revving, a perfect match. Of course, when you take on something like this, you quickly realize it's not just about bolting things together. It is not a kit car. What happens when ambition collides with reality? Mike faced a roller coaster of breakthroughs and setbacks, 
engineering puzzles, budget headaches, and the moment when the dream car suddenly began to look like a nightmare. And yet, there's a beauty in watching someone wrestle with that challenge. We'll take you to Mike's workshop, and you'll see the engine mounts, the bespoke drive shaft, and all of the wiring, and all of the raw emotion of a builder working through the problems. And when you hear that engine roar inside that little spit, you'll hear exactly why. This isn't just a build, it's a personal statement. Hey, you're on. This is just the preview. The full one-on-one -on -one dives much deeper into the triumphs, the regrets, and the sheer adrenaline of building something that few have dared to attempt. So buckle in, because when British Steel meets Japanese Fury, the story is never straightforward, and you won't want to miss what comes next.